In this video, we're going to determine the domain and find the zeros of a particular function. So consider the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 7x over x plus 4. Question A asks, what is the domain of f of x? So if you remember, we're looking for two things when we're trying to find a domain, or two things we're trying to avoid. One is that we want to make sure that we don't choose any x values that will cause division by zero. And the other one is that we never want to choose any x values that might cause us to take the even root of a negative number. So looking at this function f of x, we see that we don't have any roots at all, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do see we have a rational expression, and this function could actually be zero if that denominator is zero. The second question is, what are the zeros of the function f of x? And when we attack that question, we're going to remember that finding the zeros of a rational function means determining when the numerator is actually zero. So let's look at our domain question again. Again, we see we have a rational expression, and we need to make sure that we don't choose x values for which the denominator is equal to zero. So to solve for part a, we're going to set that denominator equal to zero, so we'll find the x value that needs to be eliminated. We see that we get x plus 4 is equal to 0, and of course, x is equal to minus 4. So all values of x will be fine in this function, with the exception of x is equal to minus 4. So if we draw the number line, we see that we have an open circle at minus 4. We can then begin to write in the interval notation, so all of the points to the left of minus 4 are open parentheses minus infinity, to minus 4 open parenthesis, union open parenthesis minus 4 to infinity. And then finally in set builder notation we write the squiggly brackets which means we're making a set and that says that x such that x is not equal to minus 4. So we've solved the first part of the problem. We found the domain of this function. Now it's time for us to find the zeros. And so to remember again, to find the zeros of any function, a rational function, we need to set the numerator equal to zero. And this is the same thing as asking when is f of x equal to zero. Now if you think about f of x equals to zero, this is trying to find the x when y is zero. So this is exactly the same thing as finding the x-intercept of this function. And so we're going to set the numerator equal to zero, which is x squared plus 7x. We recognize that there's a common x in that numerator, so we're going to factor that out, which is going to give us x times the, the um, factor x plus 7 is equal to 0. And then remember, to solve two factors multiplied together equal to 0, you set each one equal to 0. So x would be 0, and then in x plus 7, that factor, the x would be minus 7. We could solve those two simple equations on the left over there. The first one is certainly x is equal to 0. The second one to solve is x plus 7 is equal to 0, which gives us x is equal to minus 7. So we have zeros for this function, which are x equals 0 and x equals minus 7. 